we need to see the picture as a whole. You're thinking about life. You're thinking about goals. You're thinking about space. Know that you don't have to be hyper-focused on exactly what isn't working for you right there because we need to see the whole space. Patrice Washington, and this is the Redefining Wealth Podcast, where authenticity leads to alignment and abundance. Join us each week as we peel back the layers on what wealth truly means and dive into conversations that inspire, connect, and empower you to live your richest life. Get ready to challenge the status quo. It's time to redefine wealth for yourself. This week's affirmation is, my space is sacred and deserves my protection. I consider any space I occupy to be a sanctuary where I expect to find solace and peace amidst life's whirlwind. I honor its significance by surrounding myself with positivity, harmony, and maintaining an organized environment. With diligence and intention, I protect the energy within, ensuring it remains a safe haven of tranquility and my inspiration. Every item within my space holds purpose and meaning, contributing to the sanctity and my sanity and reflecting my innermost desires. As I nurture and defend my sacred space, I foster a deeper connection to myself and cultivate an environment that supports my growth and well-being. Declare with me today, my space is sacred and it deserves my protection. Welcome to the Redefining Wealth Podcast, Stephanie. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I am so excited to have you. From the first moment that I met you, introduced to you by my former neighbor, of course, when I released my house, my marital home, my primary residence last year, and I was downsizing. We don't even say downsizing anymore. I was right-sizing. You were right sizing. Yes, I was right sizing from about 6,000 square feet to 3,000 square feet. And I was like, what the heck am I going to do with all this additional furniture? And I got the bright idea that I could use my own furniture around my house for redefining wealth live instead of renting furniture. And I was talking to my neighbor, shout out to Michael, about that idea. He said, you need a professional organizer. You need this person and reached out to you. And from the first time you came over, I was like, I love her. I I love her. And I knew I was going to eventually introduce you to the entire Redefining Wealth community. And now we've done several projects together going on the last year or so. I'm really excited. Thank you for being here. Yes. Thank you for having me. And I felt the same way when I met you. I was like, she is amazing. Um, and your projects and what you do for your community and for the world. I am just, I am in awe about it. And I think it's, it's wonderful. So I feel the exact same and I, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. So Stephanie, what led you to becoming a professional organizer of all the things in the world? How did you get here? I've actually, I think I was just born this way, to be honest. I was In my teenager years, I would go to my friend's house. Then no matter where I was, I would create a space that made me feel comfortable. And it just, I was cleaning their rooms. And, uh, you know, I think they started inviting me over just to organize their spaces. They're like, Stephanie's coming over and and everything is going to be completely perfect by the time that she leaves. So it was just something about, I like to create environments that are calm and peaceful. And I've always done that all my life. So I used to work for Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. I was a mortgage lender before I was a real estate agent and I became a stay-at-home mom. So once my kids got a little bit older, I went through some, some challenges like everyone, you know, divorces and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I didn't want to get back into an industry that I didn't love. So I said, you know what I'm going to do during this phase of my life? It didn't work for me to be the stay-at-home mom in my previous marriage. And I said, I have to have some type of independence, but I want to do something I love. So in 2014, I started just pretty much organizing friends' homes. Then people started hiring hiring me and paying me to organize homes. This is is what I'm going to do, right? Then I moved away to California, came back. 
said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this one more time. I want to get back into the work field. I don't want to work for someone else. I don't want to be on, I want to be the, the mom, the wife, and to have the flexibility and still do what I love. So I decided that I was going to figure out what that was, you know, let me start an organizing business. I didn't automatically start on my own. It was a trickle in from client to client. I then joined another team who hired me and she knew I was venturing off on my own. So I was learning more of the business end. And I said, you know what, this still doesn't feel right to me. So I looked online and I am actually a member of NAPO. So it's a national organization of productivity and organizing. So then I said, okay, I'm going to get a certificate. I'm going to start getting my certificate. I need my education. And then I'll feel better because I want to present and do the right thing mentally, physically, emotionally, and, and have it the ducks in a row so I can give not only what I do naturally, but also I need to make sure that I'm giving back the exact way to my clients. So, you know, it's like dotting the I's and crossing the T's. So then I just kind of ventured off and it was one client after another. I started off with just me and my daughter. My daughter was actually working for me, incorporated the business. Then one organizer came to me and she said, I want to work with you. Are you growing? I don't work. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I, I thank you so much. And then another person came to me, said, you know, I would love to do this with you. And now I have 15 women who work with me. Wow. (laughs) I didn't realize that you had that big of a team. Yes. Wow. That's incredible. I can't do this on my own. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? I just want to take it back, though, to you taking a stand to say, I really want to do something I love. And then also tapping into those natural God-given gifts is what I would say, because a lot of times, We're always looking for the thing that's sexier and bigger and brighter. And like you, I was in mortgages and real estate and all that stuff. That was my first career, my first actual career as well. And then when everything hit the fan in the recession, I had the same thought. I want to do something that I love. I really want to do something. And just like you, Stephanie, originally... I was bartering with people for personal finance, like coaching. I was volunteering in places because it was so important just to be in a space where it was happening, where I could see people making money from it. I could see how people were navigating with this professionally because I always had a passion for it, but I never saw it as the end all be all. It was just something that I liked to do and it was, and I was a natural at it, but that time, which was for me probably about a year and a half to two years, where really I was just experimenting with friends. I was offering my services. I was bartering for hair, nails, wax appointments. (laughs) (laughs) I was bartering and all of that. But I think it's important to point that out because when people see the platform that I have now, in the fact that I have a team, it's like, oh my gosh, I got to, you know, how am I supposed to do that? And I'm sure when up and coming organizers or people who are always good at just pulling it together, like you have been since childhood, now they see you as this professional organizer in Atlanta with 15 team members and all of that. But I just want to call out that we all have to start somewhere. We have to start and you have to show up and you just show up for yourself and show up for your clients and and just show up and keep moving forward and know that whatever that is in your heart that you know is what you love and you're given a gift for and that you're giving back to. Like what has helped me also is because I had to learn business. So I didn't really understand business. Organizing is natural to me, but now I'm having to learn the business, right? And what really keeps me going is every single time we finish a project, the changes for my clients, what we've done for them, what we've created for them. We have so many different stories and that passion and that change. And it just all comes together. So it's not just all about me doing what I'm doing and and loving what I'm doing and learning what I'm doing, but it's giving, I mean, my clients are amazing. You know, it's giving back, it's changing lives for something that I was given this gift. You know, I was given this gift and to me, it just is a natural thing, but I'm able to, give a a gift back and also create a life for myself and my family. It's just all coming together, you know, and I love it. 
I can tell that you love it. And I can speak to understanding that this is truly a God-given gift for you because, okay, from the time that I knew I needed to downsize and remember I had this list. So before I even met you, I think I was meditating or praying and I got this download and I had this list and it said, if you left today, what would you take? And it was a list of just me being clear about the things that I loved in my space. This was even before I knew I was going to sell my house. And I went around and I wrote down all the things that I really loved. I went from room to room, literally with a notepad and a pen. And I was like, I love this painting. I love this thing. I love that thing. And I realized that I only love like half the stuff in my house, right? (laughs) And like all this space. And I only loved a fraction of it. And then when I did decide about a month or so later to sell the house, I went through and I had another notepad, you know, I'm good for a list. So another list. And I was like, these are all the things that I think I can repurpose for the live event. And we ended up doing that. But in my mind, it was like, I just want to put it in the storage unit. And I just want to be able to find things, baby. No, your team came and decluttered and took inventory and took pictures and labels and bought the right covers so the furniture is protected and you measured everything. And I was just watching you work. And then when the team came watching you all work and I was like, ain't no way. (laughs) Ain't no way. (laughs) I remember someone saying like, do you really need to pay somebody to do that? Let me tell you (laughs) what an investment in peace, what an investment in clarity What an investment in just just being able to breathe. Because also at that time, my house sold very quickly, remember? My house sold quickly. I had to be out of there quickly. We had multiple moves going on that you managed for us. Yes, you had your hands all over. (laughs) Yep. And I remember one day I got a call from my attorney and I was so frustrated. I was so frustrated. And I like had to cry or I had a moment. And you came and you were like, you know, hey, just breathe. I know that there's a lot going on. And I could just cry thinking about it because I was so overwhelmed with all the things happening so quickly. And I feel like even in that moment, Stephanie, you were such an angel. You were such a gift. And I knew at that moment that this means more to you than like, it's not just transactional. You really are in it for the transformation of your clients. Like you really are in it to use your gift to be a gift to us. And I just have to thank you publicly because that was really why I was like, if I need anything, you see last time you just decluttered again, your team decluttered my storage unit. I didn't even come. (laughs) I've only seen pictures and video because my operations person is the one who met with you and did all of that. But I'm like, Stephanie got me. I'm not worried about it because I know Stephanie understands me and what my needs are and what I desire. And you guys whipped it right back into shape without me being there. And I I love that for me. (laughs) Let's just talk about your process. And I just want to remind the audience, the reason that I invited Stephanie, besides the fact that I love talking to her and I love what she's done for me personally, I really invited you because this month is a space pillar month for redefining wealth. I really want to, when people are thinking about spring cleaning and all that jazz this year, I want us to be more intentional about how we go about that process and what the bigger picture is. Because it's not just about, oh, I want to have something that's Pinterest ready, or I just want everything to be color coded. What you have really instilled in me, especially when you came to do the reorganization of my kitchen in the townhome, is that this is all about what are your goals? How are you setting up your space to support what you say your goals are? And how are you making this functional? And that is, even now, it's just something I keep coming back to. And I think we did this whole thing called Committed to the Vision in our community now a couple months ago. And if we're going to be committed to the vision for our lives for this year, it is imperative that the physical space that we're in be set up to support that. And I think a lot of people struggle with, what does that mean? Does that mean just make it pretty? And it doesn't. So I'll let you go from there. Yeah, no. So your physical space will define space. So space is your environment that surrounds you. 
So that space can either be a positive influence on you or it can be a negative influence on you or it can just be a flat line. And so we don't need flat line and we don't need negative and we need it to support. If it's supporting our children, if it's supporting your mental state and your mental health waking up in the morning, if you need the clarity, if, if you need, and I know for you, you're like, okay, Stephanie, you know what? I'm starting to work out. I'm not set up for success here. There's things everywhere and, you know, it's not being used. And you say, okay, your daughter had special things. Someone else had special things that they wanted. And then you had special things. I want to, you know, have my workout stuff. And I, I want to have my protein shakes easy, accessible, and let's put all of this together. Let's create a health section. So when you wake up in the morning, you go down and it's simple, it's streamlined, it's easy. Instead of it taking 15 or 20 minutes because you got your, you're everywhere. It takes you three minutes, you know, literally pull the bullet blender out because it's all there labeled there for you. So we're not only creating a space that's, that supports your goals, we're also creating space that supports your time. So it's all these different things. So what do you want? What are your goals in the morning? Getting dressed in the morning, getting mentally prepared for your day in the morning, having your health routine, having your skincare routine, having your clothing, everything around you is either going to be calm and it's going to flow And it's going to provide you what you need in a timely manner because we only have so much time, right, in the morning. So we create those zones. We're going to create those zones. We're going to create the spaces that work for you. And for us, for what I like to do, um, it's just, it's form, it's function, and it also is beauty. So I like to pull it all in because I feel like that is what's going to support you. I know for me, it makes me feel good. I know it makes my mood enhanced. I know it encourages me. So not just organizing, you know, it's not just color coordinating and it's, you know, the right size and the right shape and all this stuff. It's like, let's get to know you and what encourages you. Let's get to know what your plan of your success is and let's let your space lift you up to start that off and to finish it. Yeah. You know, I think the misconception is Well, if I do get the cute jars that I've seen on Pinterest and I do turn all the food in my refrigerator with the label facing forward and I do these little things like that's enough. And that is the to me, it's like when they say about fitness, you can't outwork a bad diet. So to dress it up so you can have a really cute matching workout set with your sports bra and your leggings and it and your shoes and everything be so pretty. But ultimately, if you're not resting, if you're not moving, if you're not drinking water, if you're not getting your lab work done, if you're not taking care of yourself, what good is it to dress it up and make it pretty? And we are so used to just making things look pretty, but there's complete dysfunction and chaos on the backside. Yeah. For the past 30 years, Care Heating and Cooling put you first. You are the reason they are open seven days a week. You are why they make it easy to schedule service at careheatingandcooling.com. Concern for your safety is why they check every gas furnace for carbon monoxide. It's because of you that their technicians are paid to fix your furnace and air conditioner, not sell you a new one. And if you do need a new furnace, their team will make sure you get exactly what you need at a cost that fits your budget. Care Heating and Cooling is committed to doing business right. Call them at 1-800-COOLING when you need a company you can trust. I firmly believe that your business and career pursuits will only grow to the extent you're willing to clear the clutter and heal in the six pillars of wealth we talk about on this podcast. You might not actually need another business program or professional certification. What you might really need is personal transformation so you can trust yourself and your soul to do what you've already learned confidently. The doors to my 12-week transformational incubator, Pillar Mastery, are open, and I believe it is the doorway to living the rest of your life intentionally and authentically. This intimate, safe, and aligned space was designed to help you dream a new dream by elevating your mindset and actions so you can handle the transition you're in right now with more ease, grace, 
peace and clarity. Let me personally support you in getting radically honest about what's going on in those pillars of your life and then the conviction to tackle them strategically. To claim your seat in this life-shifting coaching experience, head to PillarMastery.com and together let's step into a powerful new way of being so you can finally redefine wealth for yourself. Go to PillarMastery.com. So I know a big part of your process is the decluttering. And (laughs) I know, (laughs) y'all, that decluttering with my house. But you know what? It really taught me, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, how much we don't consider the cost of hidden clutter because we assume because things are nicely organized or they look pretty that it's not clutter. But when you go through that decluttering process and your girls are like, so this is everything like, you know, and, you you know, you kind of set up those little roles. They're very kind about it. (laughs) They are. I love them. I loved everyone who worked on all of my projects, like love them. You have great girls, but it really is. You have to face some things. You have to confront some things. Even for myself, I realized that I still had a lot of my ex's stuff in my basement, even though I thought everything was out. I was finding stuff and I'm like, oh my gosh, right? And even though you're not seeing it, touching it, experiencing it on a daily basis, think about how much you are holding on to that is still draining you energetically. And in ways, maybe spiritually, in ways that you're just not even aware of. So what do you find with your clients is the most difficult part of the decluttering process? We explain everything first and we're like, okay, so we talk through it with them. You know, why are you holding on to this? You know, and sometimes we'll even make it fun. So we're, we're doing a project or we started a project in September. We're decluttering a 10,000 square foot home. She's going to list it in spring and her kids are out. They're grown. They're out They're You know, have their own places now. They're downsizing. And um, she was very emotional for the first few months that we started. And but we were patient with her. But we want to ask why, you know, why do you want to hold on to it? And we also let people kind of mourn during the process if they need to. We even had her set up. She's like, oh, I don't know if I want to get rid of this. It was when her son was in college and she created these like yard signs you know, that she just loved and didn't want to get rid of. And, and, and I said, I said, all right, Melanie, let's do this. First of all, and we do home, we, we, do, we try not to let people have homework after. So we're like, okay, Melanie, let's text your son right now. Ask him if he wants to keep it. And I, of course he's like, of course not. So we did this whole little thing. We, we went and put him out on the yard and we took pictures with her. And then we, we took it to the garbage. You know, she was so happy. About it. Most of the time it's, picture taking and then emailing the pictures to their email. So they have it in their email so they can go back. And then we create keepsake bins. You did that for Reagan. And we try to downsize it to not 20 keepsake bins. Really, we try to bring it down, take photos to, you know, you have this keepsake bin and that works a lot. I think the really cool thing, though, about the process is that it allows us to get off autopilot and ask ourselves the question why am I actually doing this or where does this come from? Because I have a firm belief that you can't recondition anything until you recognize you're doing it. And most of our habits are so normal to us. We've taken them from space to space, house to house. You know, for those of us who've moved cross country, the same person you were in Michigan is who you are in Miami, right? It's like you're doing the exact same thing in a new space. That's really interesting. That brings me to this. How often do you see your clients go into a new space and literally start the exact same habit? So I will follow up and kind of have communication with them because by the time someone hires us, they've either tried it and they've tried and it hasn't become successful and you know they've had enough or they just cannot figure it out. So before a lot of people actually come to us and ask for their support, they're already in that mindset or they're already frustrated enough that things didn't work for them, which is great. And I'll even, when anybody has another question or they're in doubt, I'm like, just let me just give you some advice. And then they'll end up calling me like two years later, you know? So we'll just, so it's most of the time, 95% of the time, people want a change. And they're intentionally hiring us to change, um, to support their goals. So 
I have a client who is in her 50s and she hired us and she said, you know what? I thought that by the time I'm, I'm where I am in my life, that I would be able to manage this alone, that I'd be able to figure it out. And I said, you know what? That's why we're here. Thank you for calling me. Let's, let's go through it. She goes, I have ADHD. I have this. I have that. I mean, her closets were Every single space was jam-packed underneath her bed, in her closets, her drawers. I mean, just every single space. And I said, you know what? First, we're going to go through the process. Don't worry about it. And I said, but just tell me about your habits. So what we did for her, and we do it mainly for most of our clients, but we, we did a little extra. We labeled a little more. We put things in a more spacious place that's going to work for her. And I called her six months into it. I called her a year into it. She said, I'm able to keep it up. I'm I'm able to do it. But it's because we set her up for success by placement, by labeling, like so she can read it bold and big. And we just did a little extra for her. And she said, "I, I can keep it up. I can keep it up. And I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. So I check up on the clients and fortunately and unfortunately, no one needs me back. They're like, no, I'm able to keep it up. I know that. So big announcement. You're going to do a Q&A to support us in the Institute for Redefining Wealth. Yay! Yes, yes. So if you are <laughs> a member of the Institute for Redefining Wealth, we're actually going to do a Q&A with Stephanie. So you can think about what your goals are, what your vision is and how you want your space to support you and where you might be struggling with some things. And Stephanie is going to give us some Huh, laser focused uh, answers in the Institute. So make sure you look out for that. We'll make sure we post the event details and all of that in the app. But Stephanie, before I let you go, I would love for you to just give us like your top three tips for anyone who is like, okay, I have a goal. I want to set myself up to be supported by my space. We got decluttering, primary real estate should not be cluttered. What else do we need to consider when we don't have a Stephanie in our back pocket, you know, and we're just at home trying to figure this out by ourselves, what are some other things we should consider? And I, I want to bring to point what you said before, too. This is a major important thing, because what I'm realizing is when someone calls me or I'm going to a consultation to look at the space or someone wants to send me a photo of something, they send me a photo of like right there. And I'm like, well, no, no, no. We need to see the picture as a whole. You're thinking about life. You're thinking about goals. You're thinking about space know that you don't have to be hyper-focused on exactly what isn't working for you right there because we need to see the whole space. We need to see the whole space. Think about the areas around you. Think about how the other areas can support you that are going to support that certain space. So we just have to figure that out. So don't be so hyper-focused on one thing and keep a broad range of your goals and remember what's around you because that's what we look at. I had a consultation today and she said, you know, this is my issue. And I said, Please take a picture of the whole space. Let's not zoom in and let's zoom out a little bit and then we can figure it out. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's such a great point because that's the only way we even got to the overflow closet. Like my backstock closet was when you were like, okay, well, what is this over here? I wouldn't have thought to include that in the kitchen. And that's the thing about having professional support. I only saw that as... That's a coat closet because when I came and did a walkthrough and the place was empty, I was like, that's a coat closet. In my mind, it could only ever be a coat closet, but I didn't even really need it as a coat closet. And when you were able to see zoom out and see the whole space, you're like, "Uh uh-uh, this here, this has value. We need to use this. And so I get it. That's really important. Hey, podcast family, big news. I've just launched a game-changing app designed exclusively for you. It is officially the Redefining Wealth app with Patrice Washington. Now all of my courses, coaching, live streams, and most importantly, my community are just a tap away all under one roof. You can download the app now for seamless access to exclusive content and a vibrant community of purpose chasers from all over the world. This is the ultimate hub for all things Patrice Washington and all things Redefining Wealth. You can search for it in your app store or find the link at redefiningwealth.app. 
That's redefiningwealth.app. Do not miss out. Your journey to redefining wealth just got a whole lot easier. Download the app today and let's take this adventure of redefining wealth for ourselves to the next level together. Stephanie, I'm so excited that I had a chance to introduce my audience to you. And I just love, again, this whole month is about releasing to receive. We've talked about decluttering and not holding on to clutter and hidden clutter and all those things. I would just love for you to share what you see your clients receive when they embrace this process. What makes me so happy about them is I've had clients call me in tears. You know, I walk up and and they're so overwhelmed. And that's a lot of time is I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm like, okay, just calm down. I'll be there. Let me just look at your space. And by the time we leave, it's I've had people cry because they're so happy. I've had messages. You changed my life, my routine. Another one of my clients, he's like, Stephanie, he goes, we own our own businesses. Our kids are super busy with sports. And he said, I'm 55 years old. And what you've done in my bathroom, my room and my personal closet, he said, it used to take me 45 minutes every single day to get ready for all of my life because it takes me 15 minutes a day. I go, oh my gosh, (laughs) yay, you know? So it's all these different things. It just makes me really happy and makes me assure, like I am doing the right thing. I am in the right space to support life for my clients. And it's just a blessing. I love it. I love it. So before I really, really let you go, we usually ask um, Redefining Wealth Rapid Wisdom questions. I'm going to ask you a few things and you can just share the first thing that kind of comes to mind for you. Okay? okay. The first one is, how do you define success? How do I define success? Um, well, success is really within yourself. So I guess it, it truly depends on where you are mentally with helping others and also helping yourself. So success for me is is challenging sometimes because, you know, you feel like you, you gain success in one area and then something else has fallen back. So I think just supporting the people that you can around you as much as you can and building them up is a success outside of yourself. And the success with, with yourself is being gracious with yourself, realizing your goals and being gracious with yourself and just keep moving forward because I don't believe anymore in my life and through the things that I've been through that you just have to keep moving forward. And I think for me, that's success. No matter what challenges, goals, and life is happening is that you just keep putting that foot forward for yourself. And I I believe that's daily success. Awesome. The second question is, how do you define wealth in three words or less? Peace, support, I guess peace and support. I love it. That's it. End of the answer that we get it. I love it. (laughs) Is there a book that has helped you redefine wealth for yourself? So there is a book and it's not, I listen to a lot of different books. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm just constantly moving. So I have audiobooks and all these different motivate. And you also are motivational. I go on for you too. But I think this is a strange answer, but, but it's the first answer that came to mind because I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of books. Most of them are motivational speakers and motivational this, but I think the book of Proverbs is actually the biggest. That is the first thing that came to mind when you asked. And I honestly, when I get out of my, out of me and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, what is today? I'm I'm feeling stressed and I'm feeling overwhelmed. So I'm going to go back to that book and It's strange how you can read that same day on the same day every single month and it means something different. You are preaching, girl, because (laughs) (laughs) that is the same for me. You know, for years, all I read daily, not all I read, but what I made sure I read every day was whatever proverb chapter for the date. And it just worked out perfectly. And Even how Redefining Wealth was born, I would say how my career was born was reading Proverbs 17, 16. And it was when I hit the scripture, what good is money in the hands of a fool if they have no desire to seek wisdom? And I had read that many times. (laughs) I had read that many times over the years. And in that moment, it meant something so different that like a light bulb went off and that changed my life. It's why my name is Seek Wisdom on Instagram. 
I was going to say, it sounds like that proverb supports your business. It does. It It's everything. That is like the defines it, you know, because that's where you started with the wealth management, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Wow. Game changer. So I love that. I love that. Thank you for saying Proverbs. I yeah, I love that. Fine. It's the first thing that came to my mind. And I yeah. was like, I know this might sound strange. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound strange to your girl. You're in good company. Um, and the last one is fill in the blank. It's just my name is, and to me, the truth about wealth is. My name is Stephanie Dalman, And the truth about wealth is, is supporting our goals and our family and our needs and our future. Amen. I love it. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank you. I am so grateful that you were here. Listen, I hope that if you were struggling with the idea of dealing with your clutter, decluttering, what is this all really about? If you've even thought about hiring a professional organizer, I'm just going to say you either need mine or you need one just like mine because this woman's heart for transformation and for her clients to be well, feel well in their space and really just thrive. It's heartwarming. I felt it myself. I keep saying that because it's genuinely true. Like I've been moved multiple times by finally investing in a personal organizer. And so anything that has been a blessing to me, I always want to expose you guys to in the hopes that it'll support your life as well. So All of Stephanie's information will be in the show notes. She is Get Organized by Stephanie on Instagram. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. And you can find out more at getorganizedbystephanie.com. Definitely reach out about a consultation there. And if you're in the Institute for Redefining Wealth, guess what? We're going to have Stephanie in the next few weeks here. We're going to try to figure out her schedule, my schedule, and make it happen And the Institute is where we're always going to give that additional support and that additional touch and make sure that you are using the pillars to move you towards the vision, the dreams and the wealth that you say you have for yourself. So super excited, you guys. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here. It's been a complete pleasure. And for everyone else, I will see you on our next Wisdom Point episode. It is coming up next Monday. You definitely want to tune in. Make sure that you get the guide this month. It's all about how to release, to receive. And this month is about letting go so you can live free. You want to lighten the load and live free. It's our theme for Redefining Wealth Live. And it's our theme for so many things. I want you to release what no longer serves you so you can receive everything that is designed to support you in this season. Until next week, you guys, I want you to live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and go earn more without feeling like you have to chase money. I'll talk to you later. Bye.